Welcome back to VA Creative and part 45 of the Ultima RS build. And on this episode, I'm going to share with you another factory upgrade. Yes, welcome back to the Dean Den and another dose of V8 Creative Spannering. And on this episode, as you heard in the intro, I'm going to be sharing with you yet another factory upgrade that has just been launched. And this one in particular, I have had a personal input because it is one thing on the car that I particularly wanted. But anyway, more about that later. And I'm pretty sure those of you out there building one of these cars or thinking of building one will want this upgrade. But anyway, let's put that aside for now. Now, the focus today is going to be a lot of smaller jobs, some of them very, very satisfying because I want to get the car in a position where I can lower it off those chassis stands. And the reason I need to do that is the engine and gearbox install is just around the corner. I know you've been waiting for it, but they are ready to go in. So without further ado, let's go over to the unpacking area and focus on that first job for today's episode. Welcome to my unpacking area. And the first job today is the fitment of the wing mirrors and also the side repeaters. Now, the reason I've lumped these together is because both are fitted to the same area of the car, and that is like the front of the center tub. So if we first focus on the wing mirrors, you have three choices when you're building an RS. Firstly, you can have the design that was developed originally for the GTR. Now, these actually sit not on the wings, but they actually sit on the door pillars. And those are offered in two options. Firstly, you can get them in a gel coat finish to match the bodywork of the car, which I'll show up there. Or you can get them made from carbon fiber, which I must, must say looks rather sexy. Anyway, there is the third option, and that is the splash the cash option. And this is using wing mirrors that have been specifically designed for the RS. And guess what? Yes, I couldn't resist it. These stunning RS wing mirrors, and I mean, they are stunning. I've actually haven't fitted them until this point in the build because often when I'm feeling a bit, well, a bit down, I tend to take these inside and cuddle them and go to sleep with them. But anyway, less about that. They are beautifully formed. The actual pillars have this like teardrop shape for aerodynamics, I guess. And they are just beautiful pieces of art and they match the side skirts and obviously the ducts and the front splitter. And internally here, you can see that there is the motorized mechanism which is plugged into the Ultima loom by these three wires and then controlled to the right of the driver. Now these, I must say, I'm looking forward to putting these on because basically it's just one very large nut and also a countersunk bolt that goes in. Now the holes for drilling these, Jeff did this during the body prefit, but it's a pretty easy job to drill these holes because Ultima provide all the details of exactly where they need to go. Next, we have side repeaters. Not a particularly exciting component, I know, but we need these for UK road legality and also in other countries around the world. Now, these items are LED, of course, to match the LED lighting on the rest of the car. And they also have a clear lens, which again suits especially my white gel coat. They plug straight into the loom here. And again, Jeff has already drilled the hole behind the RS badge. So this is basically a push in, a plug in, and they're done, as simple as that. All there is left to do now is to go over and fit these to the car. It's these sort of jobs I really like. Basically, you don't even have to drill, you don't have to file. All you do is you screw on one bolt and one nut and it's complete. Okay, a bit of wiring, but that's pretty straightforward. So as you can see here on the center tub, Jeff has drilled the large hole and a smaller hole. And 
this beautiful wing mirror. All you do is you thread through the wires and she sits just like so. Wow, look at that, look at that. Right, let me just get a spanner and we'll bolt her on. So what Ultima do is they kindly provide washers for both fasteners that are profiled to the inside sort of curvature of the center section. So what I'm gonna do is feed this through again. Access is pretty easy because you've got the access panels at the front of the center section. There we go. And now put on the big nut and washer. Obviously the wires have to be threaded through this. I'm rotating the washer to make sure it sits correctly. Okay. 24 mil spanner. And there we go. And what these mirrors also do is they also fold. Look at that, isn't that cool? Next, we're going to fit the mirrors. Very well wrapped, as you'd expect. Okay. Left hand, typical. Right hand. So what Ultima do is they provide double-sided tape to stick the glass on. Now, all done. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? But I must say, sticking that mirror on was a little bit more challenging than I thought because what you have to do is you have to allow for the movement of the mirror by the little electric motors inside the casing because on this side of the casing, because it chamfers in quite rapidly, you need a slightly larger gap this side. And it's one of those things you don't know until you try. So what I did is I popped it on and then I just adjusted it manually with my hand to make sure I could get full movement, and I can. So, all good. Next thing to do, side repeater. Now the side repeater comes with a grommet, which you take off first, which is this here, and then you pop the grommet in the hole, like so making sure that it is seated correctly and goes all the way through, which it does. And then it's just simply push this home. Now I'm not sure which way up the LEDs go, but I'm going to put them vertical. Beautiful, all done. Right, factory upgrade time, yes. Yet again, the factory has allowed me to actually share with you another brand new upgrade. And I must say, this has been one of the parts of the build which I've really, really enjoyed because as Ultima, follow their continual development to make this car even better. I have had the opportunity to share it with you or lots of these upgrades for the very first time. So for example, we had the laser cut alloy panel set. Then we had the carbon fiber center tunnel. And next, then we had the carbon fiber brake ducts that go in the rear of the front wheel arches. But now we have an upgrade that I must say is very close to my heart. Now let me paint this picture. When I look at a supercar, a fast car, a race car, any sort of car which is, yeah, 
serious, pretty serious stuff. I look at several aspects to see if it is the daddy or not. Firstly, how many exhaust pipes has it got? And how big are those exhaust pipes? If it's got four, clearly it's fast. But if it's got two, like the Ultima, which is like the size. I mean, these are huge exhausts. I'll show you at a later date. I think it's four inches. You could shoot hedgehogs out of them. But anyway, no hedgehogs have been hurt in the making of this video. Next, we look at the brakes. And of course, you know I went for the big six pot AP racing brakes. Big anchors means very fast speeds. And of course, we're looking now at her over there. And I must say, even on those chassis stands, looking pretty serious. And then speedometer. I remember as a child looking in the window of Ferraris and Lamborghinis at car shows to see how far up the speedometer went. And on this thing, it goes up a long way. I'll put an insert up there. I can't remember exactly what it is, but you'd need oxygen if you were going near the top speed there. But this next upgrade, I must say, is very, very close to my heart. Now, the reason is I'm talking about harnesses, seat belts, harnesses. These are restraints to strap you in the beast, to make you feel secure, to make you safe but also they shout a statement. Now, harnesses come in two webbing widths. They come in two inch, which is standard, and what Ultima offer at the moment, and you'll see in most road going cars. But you go to F1, you go to rally, you go to touring cars, any serious motorsport, and the webbing goes up to three inches. Yeah, big boy, they're huge. And this is exactly what Ultima can now provide. And I've got the very, very first set to fit. And of course, the brand is Willens, a brand that Ultima have worked with for a long, long time. And these belts come in multiple colors, but you guessed right, probably, I have gone for red. Just look at those. Just look at those shoulder straps. We have the correct terminations. These are perfect length for the Ultima and they have the steel adjusters. So I get so excited about this. So if you imagine we have one, we have two shoulder straps and then here we have the crutch straps. Yes, crutch straps. It's a six point harness. They're really there to stop you submarining and I don't mean getting wet. What I mean is if you hit something very hard to stop you going like a submarine. Anyway, I must say these are very, very entertaining when you're strapping in the opposite sex wearing a skirt. Anyway, I'll move on from that. So here's the crutch straps. And then next we have the lap straps, two of them. And these are actually two inch webbing. And the reason why we've left it two inch is when you have three inch across your lap, it all gets a bit, well, it's a bit uncomfortable. So there we go. And here's the other lap strap here. Now, as I said, these come in multiple colors. And if you contact Ultima, they'll tell you what colors you can have. But I've clearly gone for red because it really complements my black interior and red accents throughout the vehicle. The red brake calipers, the valve covers, and also the stitching on the interior. So the next thing for us to do is just pop over. I'm going to bolt this lot in, get in the seat and just feel what it actually feels like to be strapped in to my beast for the very, very first time. Welcome inside the RS cockpit. Now, before I put these full harnesses on, what I want to do is finish off this rear bulkhead. So basically what that is, is sticking on this center bit of carpet, which is still loose, um, and also trimming the bottom so it fits perfectly against this chassis tube. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure this is 
positioned so it can seamlessly join the carpet that's there already which is a little bit tricky I would say so live your life within the moment moment and don't go wait until the morning morning you never know when it is over over all that I know is still get older Right, so fitting seat belts. The first belts we fit are the shoulder straps, which are pretty straightforward, really. They just bolt onto the roll cage, like so. Now, of course, Ultima provide a fixings kit, you'd expect nothing less. So let's open this up and we need two bolts and two washers. Now, of course, these are the correct tensile strength. And what we have to do is just cut around the leather so the bolts will go in and the leather won't foul the threads. First is to fit the shoulder straps. Take one bolt, one chamfer washer through the fastening and screw it in. Do the same with the other one. And you can probably see by now how this is lifting the interior instantly. It makes quite a difference. Okay. There we go. So the shoulder bouts now in. Next, we're going to do the lap bouts. Okay, lap straps now, and they fit on this side where the center tunnel is, and the other on that side. But we're going to focus on this side first. Now, because we have a center tunnel cover, what you have to do is space these bolts out. So they say use two. I may need three. So that can go like so, just like that. And swing it. Like so. Now these go up at a 45 degree angle. Like so. Probably down a bit actually. And they go up over like so. Now we'll do the other side. So this bout, this side, same principle, requires one washer at the back, one washer at the front. Make sure the carpet is cut so it doesn't get crushed. See, it's easy to screw in because Ultima, have, after they powder coated the chassis, ran out the threads, which is a nice touch. OK, 
again 45 degrees right we have shoulder straps in place lap straps in place and now all that's left are the crutch straps now what Ultima do is they provide a diagram with the measurements on to show you where to drill in the floor for the fastenings for those two bouts so let me just get the crutch strap I'll just lay it out here so there's two fastenings because it's six point of course we lay it upside down and then what I have to do is drill these two holes here now I'm just going to get the diagram and then I'm going to measure those out I'll probably do it from underneath and drill up through Okay, so we got our two holes drilled here for the crutch strap and these go like so here are the bolts and lock nuts one chamfered washer at the top on both sides so let me just put these underneath. I don't know if my arms are long enough to do this on my own. Let's see if this works. So that's the crutch straps done. Right, so they're all done now. So what we do next is we pop the seat in. seat in oh. now you got to be careful putting the seat in and out because there's metal rails on the bottom of it and you don't want those to scratch the carbon right so now I've got to get this through this hole here Ah. Well, that's the first challenge. I've got to put those through from the front because they're too big. Anyway, I'll get onto that in a minute. They're easy. Those are easy. This one 
is being a bit challenging. <laughs> okay, and then that clips on like so. And these one, two. So that's those. Now these back here, I'm gonna to have to take them off again because they, I can't get them through there. Anyway, just bear with me. There we go. Okay, so all of these are in. Let's plug these in here. They need to be loosened off. Nice, easy. Go, one. There we go, full harness. Look at that, look at that. Right, let's bolt the seat in and then I'm gonna jump in. Okay, right, now I'm gonna install myself. Now, I'm getting a little bit old to do this, I've decided, having practiced it off camera. But anyway, you can have a laugh at me trying to get in. Now, anyone that's ever sat in an Ultima will know is <laughs> the driver's side is easier because you've got the steering wheel to hold on to. But for the passenger, you have to step on the seat Pull on the roll bar, right. I'm not saying uh, I'm a professional at this, but, and then you lower yourself down. There we go. <laughs> Welcome to the inside of my RS cockpit. And boy, what an environment this is. Roll cage wrapping around me, carbon fiber everywhere, and hugged in this amazing bucket seat. So. All there's left to do is weld me in with this full harness. So first of all, ugh, crutch strap, pull that up, then lap straps. I know you can't see these, but you know what I'm doing. Put the lap straps in and then pull them tight. Right, already I'm feeling very secure. And then the shoulder straps. That's one and Here's the other. And then just pull. And then pull. And just sort of get my clothes in the right place. Yes. Woo! Wow, doesn't it feel good? Oh, I feel very safe. And I must say <laughs> that having been in a lot of very, very, very fast cars, when you sit in an Ultima, it's quite like nothing else. I can't explain it. I think what it is, is it feels like your feet are dangling out the front of the car because there's a lot of kit behind you. And just in front of you, that sort of bonnet or front canopy just disappears. And then you just see those two wheel arches ahead of you, which they look so aggressive, especially with those vents in, which the RS has as an upgrade. So. And there we are. I am feeling very safe, very secure, and very manly with my three inch webbing. So on that point, what I'm gonna do is close this episode and really go indoors, have a beer, and celebrate. Unfortunately, I can't take my wing mirrors in anymore, but there you go. I'm sure I'll find another piece of carbon. Yeah, maybe the rear wing, but that's a bit big to cuddle. Anyway, next episode is gonna be a biggie because I'm gonna get the RS back on the floor, on its rubber. And to do that, I need my son, so I've booked him in. I need an engine lifter, which I have got from Draper Tools. And also I need some webbing to lift this beast. So it will be entertaining. Touch wood, it goes well. But until next time, all I can say is happy spannering. Yeah.